I am loving. I am fabulous. I am beautiful. I am saved. I am a victor. I am faithful. I am devout. I am accepted. I am a Christian. I am MCC. Yes, and I am MCC. I am MCC. I am MCC. And I am MCC. 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 Our reading is taken from the Song of Songs in the Hebrew Testament, chapter 5, verses 3 to 5, and verses 10 to 16. We are reading from the NRSV English translation. I had put off my garment. How could I put it on again? I had bathed my feet. How could I soil them? My beloved thrust his hand into the opening, and my inmost being yearned for him. I arose to open to my beloved, and my hands dripped with myrrh, my fingers with liquid myrrh, upon the handles of the bolt. My beloved is all radiant and ruddy, distinguished among ten thousand. His head is the finest gold, his locks are wavy, black as a raven. His eyes are like doves beside springs of water, bathed in milk, fitly set. His cheeks are like beds of spices, yielding fragrance. His lips are lilies, distilling liquid myrrh. His arms are rounded gold, set with jewels. His body is ivory work, encrusted with sapphires. His legs are alabaster columns, set upon bases of gold. His appearance is like Lebanon, choice as the cedars. His speech is most sweet, and he is altogether desirable. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. We are still reading from the Song of Songs, chapter 7, verses 1 to 13, also from the NRSV English translation. How graceful are your feet in sandals, O queenly maiden! Your rounded thighs are like jewels, the work of a master hand. Your navel is a rounded bowl that never lacks mixed wine. Your belly is a heap of wheat encircled with lilies. Your two breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle. Your neck is like an ivory tower. Your eyes are pools in Heshbon by the gate of Bathrabim. Your nose is like a tower of Lebanon, overlooking Damascus. Your head crowns you like caramel, and your flowing locks are like purple. A king is held captive in the tresses. How fair and pleasant you are, O loved one, delectable maiden. You are stately as a palm tree, and your breasts are like its clusters. I say I will climb the palm tree and lay hold of its branches. O oh, may your breasts be like clusters of the vine, and the scent of your breath like apples, and your kisses like the best wine that goes down smoothly, gliding over lips and teeth. I am my beloved's, and his desire is for me. Come, my beloved, let us go forth into the fields and lodge in the villages. Let us go out early into the vineyards and see whether the vines have budded whether the grape blossoms have opened and the pomegranates are in bloom. There I will give you my love. The mandrakes give forth fragrance, and over our doors are all choice fruits, new as well as old, which I have laid up for you, O my beloved. Our contemporary reading is taken from the book, Touching Our Strength, The Erotic as Power and the Love of God by a lesbian Anglican priest, Carter Hayward. An ethic centered in the value of erotic power and relational fidelity embraces sexual pleasure as intrinsically good. The value of sexual pleasure testifies to the more encompassing value of erotic power as sacred. Because this is so, the fact that sex is pleasurable can never be the basis for judging it wrong. In the context of mutuality and our fidelity to our commitments, it is wonderful to make love, 
good to touch and rub and lick and suck each other silly. But we are learning we have to be careful. We are learning to protect ourselves and one another. Two values seem to me very basic to an ethic of erotic friendship. The first is the sacred value of our sensuality, our erotic power, and our unalienated sexuality. We are embodied bearers of the erotic, or God, with one another, as she crosses over among us. Thus, we are obligated to respect our own and others' bodily integrity, especially the bodily integrity of children, women, and sexually vulnerable men. Another scripture reading from the second letter of Peter, chapter 1, verse 5 to 7, NRSV. For this reason, you must make every effort to support your faith with goodness, and goodness with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with endurance, and endurance with godliness, and godliness with mutual affection, and mutual affection with love. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling us today. May the words we receive inspire us, comfort us, and challenge us. Amen. Okay, so happy Sunday. Welcome, welcome everyone. Those who are here in the chapel and those in the uh, live streaming. Again, welcome and good day to you wherever you are wherever part of the world you are. Okay, so we continue with our reflection series on understanding sin today. Uh, bago natin puntahan ang napaka, palaging controversial na chika ng MCC tungkol sa sex, sex theology, uh, review muna tayo of last week. Ano ang topic natin last week? What, what, what's our reflection topic last week? Which sin? The sin of lying or the sin against truth. No? Ano, anong, ano, anong takeaways nyo last week? For those joining us in the live streaming, you can, you know, comment in the comment section, the live chat. Uh, if I have some questions uh, throughout the course of this uh, preaching or reflection. Anong ano? Anong mga best takeaways niyo or quotable quotes from last week's sin of lying? You cannot use imperfection uh, to justify bad behavior. Specifically, you cannot say na lahat naman ay nagsisinungaling. So, Inormalize natin ang pagsisinungaling. Hindi na dapat issue ang pagsisinungaling. You cannot do that. Even though it is human reality. Ano pa? Well, I mean, in relation to that, what I said last week is that it is a human reality. Totoo. The first part of the argument is true. It is factual. Lahat ay nakapagsinungaling at nakapagsisinungaling from time to time. But precisely because of that human reality, human experience, humanity has always decided and has always upholded, pinanindigan throughout human history and civilization, ang pagtindig sa katotohanan. Otherwise, uh, human civilization w w wouldn't have been possible if uh, if ni reject ang truth, truth telling, and truth living. Um, part ng human ci civilization ang the integrity of truth. Ano pa? Ano pang ano? Chika natin from last week. Sa chat, meron bang sumagot? Wala? Yes. There are certain situations that is lying is even encouraged. 
ang pagsisinungaling ay even becomes a duty. No? At ang example natin last week was during the time of the Holocaust, the Nazi genocide or extermination of the Jewish people. No? And Jews and non-Jews had to lie in order to save themselves or innocent lives. At last week nga natanong ako, natanong ako ni Jos last week, paano naman yung ano, yung kung hindi ka pa out and you need to lie. I, I guess that's also permissible if you are uh, a, an LGBTQ I plus young person and you are in a family that is very conservative. Uh, if you feel that you will be at risk uh, physically or mentally, uh, if you will receive mental ab um, emotional abuse, then perhaps there is a period of time that you need to lie about your sexuality or gender identity. And I guess that's in a way permissible. But other than those situations where you have to save lives and innocent lives, there is no other reason or other situations that call for lying. Lying is a, an offense against relationships. And relationships are not possible when there is deception. So, yeah, yan, mga ating mga, uh, some of the things we talked about last week. And if you wish to listen to that, hear that, nasa YouTube po natin. So, today, we are talking, finally, talking about sex. Sexual sin. Um, hmm. So, today's reflection, itong, nakatatlong draft ako, actually apat, itong, itong final reflection ko, final preaching ko, is the fourth and final one. I had to revise and revise it because I, I realized that it's a huge topic. It's a very huge topic. And kung medyo mahaba siya today, uh, please, I ask for your understanding and patience. Maikli na to sa lagay na ito, na mga itchichika ko today. This reflection today is also partly history. I will talk about part history, part science and psychology. And then of course, a lot of it is ethics and theology. Uh, a disclaimer then, no? just a disclaimer, we cannot exhaust, I cannot exhaust, or talk about everything there is to talk about sexual ethics. Actually, yan ang main topic natin today, sexual ethics. Uh, and sexual sins. Hindi siya kasiyang pagkasahin sa Sunday na ito. And then I realized that baka perhaps in the future I need to do uh, a lecture series on sexual ethics. So today is just a snapshot. No, snapshot lang. And I'm sure many people who will be listening today, watching in live streaming, you will have many questions. Most of it are specific situations and specific behaviors. Um, I might be able to discuss a few situations, but again, I cannot exhaust everything. Hindi siya kasha sa, sa Sunday na ito. Ano yan? Anong chika? May chika ba dyan? Okay. Ayan. I also want you to focus on the principle. On the principles and context of what I'm going to discuss today. Rather than on the specific situations. Because having clearer understanding of the principles and context will help you to then apply those specific, uh, apply those principles to specific ethical questions that you may have. Open Table MCC does not, as much as possible, we do not spoon feed. And we prefer that you learn critical thinking. And to practice your own reflections on what it means to be sex positive and sex authentic and sexually ethical. 
So gusto kong umpisahan ang reflection na ito tungkol sa sex at sexual pleasure sa usapin ng science, specifically biology. Ipark muna natin yung usapin ng theology at moral uh, moral theology or ethics. Park muna natin. Umpisahan natin sa biology. So as a refresher, lahat naman tayo mo, at, sa live streaming, nagdaan siguro sa biology, no? Sa basic science, the anatomy, human body. Um, our bodies are capable of sex. Tama? Because of our physical sex, physical organs. We are capable of sex, we have sexual desires, and we are capable of sexual pleasure. But with the acknowledgement, kailangan natin i-acknowledge, the acknowledgement and the exception of people who are asexual or aromantic. Or other people, meron ding other people who either pinanganak sila with a certain condition or that somewhere in their life something happened to them, accident or whatever, that uh, prevents them from having sexual pleasure, sexual desire, uh, or limits their capacity for sexual pleasure and sexual desire. So meron yan. Uh, it's also natural that come a certain age, uh, most people lose or nagdi-diminish ang sexual drive or yung libido. Sexual pleasure from sexual intercourse in whatever manner or way is possible with or without the intention of conceiving and giving birth to children. Agree din ba tayo doon? Sexual pleasure from sexual intercourse in whatever way or manner is possible with or without the intention of conceiving and giving birth to children. Pwede ang sex whether may intention kang mag-anak o hindi. So malinaw tayo dyan. Okay, naka, malinaw tayo dyan from a biological standpoint. Now, with the rise and development of feminist and queer theory, as late as, you know, in the early 1900s or even the late 1800s, the rise of feminist and queer theory and later feminist queer liberation theology, we are then opened up to the many problems and oppressive theologies in many areas of life and society, including theologies and ideologies about our bodies, sexualities, and genders. So, nung nagkaroon ng liberation theology, nagkaroon ng queer theory, feminist theory, nabuksan tayo na marami palang tayong societal panglipo ng problema pagdating sa maraming aspeto ng buhay at lipunan. Including sa aspeto na ating katawan, ng sex, sexuality, at ng uh, kasarian, gender. At isa, ang isa dyan, ang isang mating ka dyan, na hanggang ngayon nandyan pa rin, at pinaninindigan ng maraming conservative na simbahan, the moral and doctrinal theology na nagkukulong at nagtatakda na ang sex at sexual pleasure ay para lamang sa pagbuo ng bata at pamilya at kailangan pumaloob sa kasal has proven to be oppressive and repressive. Which also means sex is, sex is only for heterosexuals capable of producing babies. Kinakahon lamang doon Ang pagkakahon doon ng sex and sexual pleasure ay isang uri ng oppression. Sa mga progressive 
theologies and progressive theories, even in sociology or psychology, ang pagkakahon ng sex sa pag-aanak has been found to be repressive and oppressive. Lest you get me wrong, I'm not saying that in itself, mali yun. I'm not saying that if you have sex because you want to have babies, is wrong. Hindi, hindi yun yung sinasabi ko. It is okay. It is good. If heterosexual couples wish to have sex to have babies, okay lang yun. Ang sinasabi ko, pag yung ganung konsepto ng sex, ay yun lang yung tamang sex. Yun lang ang tamang okasyon at sitwasyon for sex. Oppressive yan. Repressive yan. At wala na yung relevance o hindi, wala na, hindi na yan aligned sa kung ano ang nalalaman natin today based on science. Based on biological, anatomical science and based on uh, psychological science and other social sciences. And so, in the last 100 or so years of feminist and queer theory, and later nga, pagsulpot ng feminist and queer theology, academics and theologians who are progressive have and continue to reclaim, i-reclaim ang sex, sexual desire, and sexual pleasure. Especially in alignment to the developments and findings of modern science, medicine, psychology, and sociology. Developments and findings about sex, sexuality, and gender. And so, sa pag-uusap, sa usapin natin ng sexual ethics, sexual ethics, our sense of right and wrong, of good and evil, of proper and improper sexual attitudes, beliefs, behaviors, and practices has to come first from a place of reclaiming our sex bodies. The affirmation and the celebration that sex, sexual desire, and sexual pleasure are part of our human condition, capability, and reality. E, sexual ethics has to come from a place of sex-positive perspective. That's the first principle. The beauty of sexual desire and intimacy is celebrated in the Book of Songs. Alam nyo, yung mga Jewish writers, the, he, the ancient Hebrew writers, wala silang eme pagdating sa sex. And hence, there is even a book in the Bible, in the Hebrew Testament, in the Old Testament, that is very erotic. It is even more erotic if you, sabi nila, if it is even more beautifully erotic if you read it in the original Hebrew. Medyo nawawala yung kanyang poetic beauty nung pag-translate na siya sa English. Eh. And part of that is what we read. So, ina-affirm actually, no? Ina-affirm ng Bible writer and those who decided to include that book into the official canon of scripture, ina-affirm nila ang kondisyon at reality ng sex, sexual desire, and sexual pleasure. And it's in the Old Testament. The Book of Songs. The Songs of Songs or the Song of Solomon. The Book of Songs. You can... You can interpret the Book of Songs as metaphor for whatever, but the plain text of the but the plain text boldly and passionately declares human sexuality. In reclaiming that, as someone who considers himself as a feminist and queer, I will then theologically interpret. I interpret ko na. I will then theologically interpret and boldly proclaim that sex, sexual desire, and sexual pleasure are good and sacred. I will echo and repeat what Carter Hayward said. 
sexual pleasure is good and it is even sacred. They are gifts that are intrinsically part of who we are as human beings, whose sexed and gendered bodies are created in the image and likeness of God. Again, with the acknowledgement that people who are asexual or have certain conditions that prevents them from having sex are also created in the image and likeness of God. Our contemporary reading from Carter Hayward, a lesbian Episcopalian slash Anglican priest and theologian, tells us in her book, Touching Our Strength, ulitin ko yung, yung binasa ni Josh, an ethic centered in the value of erotic power and relational fidelity embraces sexual pleasure as intrinsically good. Also, Marcella Althaus Reed, the Latina feminist queer theologian par excellence, boldly declares, all theology is sexual theology. In short, sex is good. Tama ba? Amen? <laughs> Amen? Sex is good? Parang hindi. Ha, hindi pa? Hindi nyo pa naranasan? Hindi pa naranasan ng hallelujah ng sex? Mga celebrate kayo. <laughs> sex is good. Amen. Sa ano? Amen ba sa mga kasama natin sa ano? Sa live streaming? Sex is good. On this specific Sunday, Lent, and it is in the season of Lent, dito nyo lang sa Open Table MCC maririnig ang sabihin ng pastor o pare, Oh, sex is good. Libog is good. Ang mga katawang nagkikiskisan at nagyayakapan ay mabuti at banal. Hindi ito nalilimitahan lamang sa pag-aasawa ng mga heteroseksual at sa pagnanais na mag-anak. Sex and sexual pleasure are also, if not, more about human intimacy of Mutually consenting adults. Sa totoo lang, napaka-rare lang naman talaga ng mga couple na magsisex dahil o oh, magsex tayo kasi gusto nang magkaroon ng baby. Meron yan. Pero for the vast majority ng mga taong mag -e engage into sexual activity or, or encounter, ano ang rason? It's pleasure. It's intimacy. It's the joy of being with another person physically. And there are straight couples who decide to be married and decide not to have children. And I know some people, some couples like that. Another thing we must understand, and I will try to explain as briefly as possible. Punta na tayo sa historical. Historically speaking, various peoples, cultures, religions, and civilizations knew about the power of sex and sexual pleasure. Hindi lang sex is good. Ang sex ay makapangyarihan. Tama ba? Is sex powerful? It is. It is a very powerful human experience and human activity. It is powerful. It engages all your senses. Sight, hearing, taste, touch. Lahat. It has, it, it, has a huge impact to your psyche, to your human psyche, to your psychology. Napaka-powerful ng sex. And people's cultures, religions, and civilizations knew about the power of sex and sexual pleasure. As human beings trying to organize themselves into tribes, communities, religious groups, and nations, 
humans knew about the power of sex and sexual pleasure. Makapangyarihan ng libog at ang pakikipag-sex. Anything, but ito nga yun, anything that is powerful, even if it is good and sacred, can also be corrupted, abused, or cause harm to individuals and to communities. Therefore, historically speaking, every tribe, community, culture, religion, and nation of every age tried to regulate and control the sexual lives of their members within the parameters of the time and context within their time and context, in which those parameters were mostly patriarchal and feudal, and later on, capitalist. Patriarchal meaning male-centered, male-masculine, man-centered. So, nakapangyarihan ng sex, every age, every culture, and it was natural for the groups, the communities, the tribes, to try to regulate it, to try to set boundaries on what is harmful, what is not harmful, what is beneficial for the individual and for the community in the context of a male-centered society, in the context of a feudal community, historically speaking. Because modern science, modern academics has only been ex in existence for a what, what? 200, 300 years? And the best developments has only happened within the last 100 years. So many things and many ways of regulating sex and people's sexuality was only regulated within yung kung ano lang yung alam nila, kung ano lang yung consciousness nila at that time. Pre-science societies. Pre-modern science was all about male dominance. Everything revolved around men, male and masculine. Everything and everyone else is property or our property of the privileged men. Women were property whose only purpose was to um, paanakan and sexual pleasure of men. Hindi nga consider na may sexuality ang women eh, in ancient times, in pre-science, pre-civil rights times. Ang kasal nga noon ay has something to do more with politics and economy rather than love. Game of Thrones levels. Kaya kung babasahin natin maigi ang Bible, lalo na yung Old Testament, may mga mababasa tayo dyan na mga weird at kakaibang mga batas o kautusan tungkol sa sex. Weird, weird na siya para sa atin ngayon. If you read the book of Numbers, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy, there are legislations there, law, actual law, about sex, sexual relationship, marriage, that in today's time, weird and even unacceptable. Isa dyan ay, uh, may alam ba kayo na weird na ano, sexual regulation sa Bible? Meron ba sa live streaming? Meron ba kayo alam na weird na sexual or marriage law na ano, anong paano adultery? Hmm, hindi naman siya weird. I mean, it's, it's understandable for that time. Kaya ano yung mga some of the weird? One of the weird things, uh, 
re- revolve mostly revolve around rape. The concept of rape in ancient times. May isang law in in I think it's in the book of Numbers, if not in the book of Deuteronomy. Ang sabi, ang isang babae, ay, pag siya ay i-rape sa city, sa lungsod, sa town, kailangan mag-ingay siya. Kailangan right, and there, right then and there, humingi siya ng tulong. Pag hindi, hindi consider na rape yun. Libawa, na-rape siya, sinabi niya two days from now. Hindi yun considered rape. Ang katwiran nung verse na yon, pag binasa mo yung uh, buong verse, because there will always be people around the city, around the town, around your house, na makakarinig sa iyong sigaw. So if you do not say anything at the moment that you are about to be raped, if you say that days after or even hours after, that cannot be considered as rape. And rape can only happen in the palayan, in the fields. Kasi doon daw, kahit magsisisigaw yung babae, at kahit magtatatakbo ka, walang makakarinig sa'yo, and therefore marirape ka talaga. That's weird. Totoo. I mean, even from the, the context of ancient times, totoo bang walang marire- ang, ang, ano, walang rason para hindi marape ang babae sa lungsod? Kung i-threaten siya, napapatayin ang, di ba, the, the common, ano, pag nag-ingay ka, papatayin kita o papatayin ko ang, ang mahal mo sa buhay. O di, hindi magsasalita yung, ano, yung babae. That is what is great, mag-ingay. Mm. Pero kung mag-ingay na, I don't want to be pero mag-ingay na, tas sa hasta na pa, hindi may problem. Mm. Mm-hmm. O, oh, hindi ba considered na rin? Hindi ang sinasabi ang sin, ang, ang sinasabi doon sa verse is yung pag sinabi mong rape ayaw mo eh ayaw mo so kung ayaw mo hindi pwedeng hours after or days after sa kamo sasabi yung nangyari sa amin ay rape at ayaw ko noon because hindi ka humingi ng tulong at that very moment that's what the verse is saying ginusto mo Yes. May consent ka. That's the assumption. And that is a male. That is an assumption of a man. One of the weird things. Ano pa mga weird ano? Sa ano? Ang may isa pang weird na Ah, ito. Ito yung pinaka galit na galit mga feminista. There is a legislation in the Bible where it says If a man touches or have an intercourse with a virgin or rapes a virgin, huh? Yes. Uh, the man has to pay the price of marriage to the father of the woman and that the woman will be married to the one who raped her, to the man. who violated her. So in short, ni rape ka na nga, ipapakasal ka pa dun sa nang rape sa iyo. That's the that's that's in the Bible. You can find that. So in and the assumption that is not only male, it gives you the assumption that again a woman is a property. The mere fact na kailangan mo magbayad sa halaga ng kasal because you already took the property of the father so that that's is any christian following that right now is there any christian who who pag ni-rape yung kanyang anak na dalaging ding if a follow yung nakalagay sa bible na yon walang gagawa niyan ngayon Mga? Ma- mga lit- not even the literalist would, would with a uh, I, 
Mm, pwede rin. Oh, pwede rin pala. Oo, pwedeng may gumawa. To save the dignity of the family, nangyayari din yun pala, no? Ni-rape, oh, para hindi lumabas sa buong mundo na rape ang nangyari, pakasal na lang kayo. No? Para hindi lumabas yung kwento ng rape. Ano pa? Child marriages. The norm. The norm of marriage in ancient times, in biblical times, is that as soon as a young lady, a young daughter of age 12 years old, 11 years old, as soon as magmenstruate, yun yung pamantayan ng womanhood noon eh, as soon as magregla ka, hindi ka na bata, babaeng buo ka na. Kahit, siguro nagre, may mga nagreregla na maaga, 10 years old, even as early as 9 years old. Pag nagregla ka, pwede ka nang ibenta ng tatay mo to the highest bidder. And that is regardless whether the man is 20 years older than the young daughter. In, mm. Mm -mm. And in some Arab countries, it is still, that kind of child marriage is still practiced in some tribes, some Arab communities. Um, even in the Philippines, a few decades ago, it, is, it was still practiced in, in some areas. Hindi naman, hindi naman pang kalahatan, but you know, it was still practiced in some communities before. Mm, pambayad utang mo. Oh, isa pa yan. Pambayad. Property nga kasi. Babae, no? So these are weird. Se has something to do with sex, sexual relationships, marriage. These are weird. It is weird for us now. But they were the norm. They were the legislation during the time that they that, that was written because that's the only thing that they knew at the time. Saan ako? Uh -huh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Wait lang. Wala ako sa aking script. Yan. Child marriages. Uh, biblical marriage is also polygamous. Polygamy is is allowed. Uh, in the Bible, in the in the sense that one man can have many wives, that's acceptable back then. Concubinage was also acceptable. You have biblical writers who uh, biblical characters who have official wives, but also have concubines. Ang concubine hindi an prostitute ha. That is not a prostitute. That's a misconception. Iba pa yung prostitute. At usually, si concubine yung talagang love. The official wife is political and economic in, in ang, ang, to have a wife, an official wife from a prominent family. For the purpose of having children, an heir. An heir. The purpose of political alliances. So, napakara at in the Bible, napakaraming kwento ng rape sa Old Testament. They, the, the biblical writers, and then later on, the biblical, the ones who decided which books will be included in the Bible, wala silang eme. They did not sanitize stories of rape and sexual violence, in the, in the, especially in the Old Testament. Actually, the Bible is not a book for children. It has a lot of violence. The Old Testament has a lot of violence and sex on it. Kung tutusin, R16 or R18 ang Old Testament. So, punta din naman tayo sa New Testament. Dat dapat natin din ma-realize under that same knowledge na nung si San Pablo, St. Paul, because St. Paul has a lot to say about sexual morality. Especially in the book of Corinthians, the first letter of Corinthians. 
And Apostle Paul, whatever he has to say about sexual morality, was and many of it is in the first letter to his first letter to the Corinthians. It was in response to a particular situation in the Church of Corinth. May nangyayaring sexual happening in the Church of Corinth na galit na galit si St. Paul. There was a specific situation. And this is what he, in the letter says, no? Um, there was a man who was living with the wife of his father. That was the actual words. It was reported to me that what, there is a certain man among you who is living with the wife of his father, a practice that is not even done by pagans. Sabi ni Paul. Sobrang naskandalo si Paul na merong church member, a, Christ, a baptized Christian, a church member, who took the wife of his father. Sobra siyang naiskandalo at na-horrified doon that he says, it's not even practiced by those who are non-Christians. You are doing something that is greatly horrible. Ganun ang dating kay, kay Paul. At ang sabi pa nga ni Paul, dalhin niyo yan sa assembly. Sa simbahan, alam mo, nag-assemble yung church. Dalhin niyo yung, yung lalaki niyan sa assembly. Condemn him to Satan. <laughs> condemn him to death. Not literal death, no? I mean, condemn him to excommunicate niyo siya. Yung sabi ni Paul. For, se for that kind of sexual immorality. Taking the wife of your father. So, ne, hindi niya mother yon. Ibig sabihin, second wife ng, ng tatay niya that he took for himself. And so, things that Paul said in the letter to the Corinthians was intended for the church in Corinth with that specific situation. Paul when he writes his letters, he writes his letters in response to the problems, challenges, or victory, or celebration of a particular church he is writing to. He never intended, he never imagined that his letters will be read to ta and translated to different languages 2,000 years after. Actually, we are guilty of ano to? We are guilty of intruding into the confidentiality of the letters of Paul. Nakikisilip tayo sa, sa nakikichismis tayo sa nangyayari dun sa nangyayari, I mean, dun sa nangyayari sa mga simbahan ni Paul noon. And what I'm trying to say, whatever Paul said about sex, sexual morality, is also within the context of his time. For someone who is Jewish in first century Roman Empire, as a Jewish Pharisee, isa siyang pariseyo, a learned, highly intelligent, intellectual Jewish Pharisee who is trying to theologize what it means to be Christian at that time. What it means to have a safe space as a church in that time with the reality of sex in the lives of the early Christians. And so what, what they teach, ano bang tinuturo nila sa atin beyond what they have actually said or written? Tayo rin, Tayo ngayon, 2,000 years after, we must wrestle and develop our own ethical beliefs and practices based on the social realities of our time today. Not only in the issue of sex, but many issues. We have to wrestle with and develop our ethics and theologies in the context of our time today. In, more importantly, develop our beliefs and practices on the basis 
and in consideration to what science and other different branches of modern knowledge have already taught us. One learning we can draw on from the history and even from the response of Paul to the Corinthian church is that we all have, then and now, struggles on what it means to acknowledge sex in our lives and how to keep our community safe. If there is something to learn about the, the, the legislation and the struggles of Paul's churches or the Jewish people in ancient times, the lesson to learn is that we then and now we still struggle and we have to struggle what does it mean to be a safe space what is our ethical boundaries how do you balance sex positive and sexual ethics in our time today with the knowledge that we have today the irony Punta na tayo sa actual na ethics. The irony of or contrast of this is that those who are sexually liberated are also the ones with the greatest commitment to sexual ethics and integrity. Ang pinaka-ironic dito and what I have experienced in my own life, those who are sexually healthy, those who are sexually liberated, are the ones that have the highest commitment and standard to sexual ethics. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin sa akin na, na sexually liberated ka, pero wala kang ethics. At hindi mo pwedeng sabihin sa akin may sexual ethics ka, pero masyado kang mapanghusga pagdating sa sex. It goes together. As a reminder, the first thing we should know, balik tayo sa unang principle. Ano yung unang principle? Sex is good. The first principle, and as a reminder, is that sex is a normal human reality. And it is good as a form of human intimacy and even as human play. We can never begin sexual ethics from an old paradigm of sexual negativity. Hindi tayo pwede mag, magkaroon ng sexual ethics coming from a ne sex negative paradigm of the old. We should know by now that sexual negativity and repression is the one or the ones that lead to unhealthy sexual manifestation and therefore sin. You, kung sino yung sexually repressed, kung sino yung pumapaloob sa isang napaka-oppressive na pananaw at pamumuhay tungkol sa sex, most of the time, at yung mga environments na ganon, doon nagkakaroon ng sexual violence. Doon nagkakaroon ng harm towards vulnerable, towards children, towards women, and other vulnerable men. Yung nagdi-deny, yung nagre-reject na mabuti ang libog, mabuti ang sexual pleasure, yung ganong environment, doon nangyayari usually ang maraming mga sexual sins. Maski nga, di ba, masturbation, bawal, doon nang gagaling ang sex. Because if it is part of your human biology, if you repress it, it is like water that will find its way somewhere, somehow, someday. In a way that is harmful and unhealthy. Buti sana kung harmful lang sa sarili mo. Most of the time, it is harmful to others. At yung sabi ni, yung ano ni Sean kanina, buti nga sana kung dahan-dahang manifestation, minsan, sumasabog sa tindi ng repression. 
The second thing, the second principle that we must understand about sexual ethics is the principle of mutual consent, mutuality and consent. Any and all sexual act that is not mutually consensual is a sin. Anumang sexual engagement na walang malinaw na mutual consent, that is sin. That is harm. That is abuse. It is an offense against true human sexual intimacy. Because intimacy can only happen between two consenting and mutually pleasuring adults who are fully informed and autonomously deciding to engage. Mutually consensual, in, ito pa, consent has to be there from beginning to end. Mutually consensual in the beginning, in the middle, and in the end of any sexual act. If, you are, if your sexual partner tells you to stop in the middle of the act, wag mong ipilit. Stop. You have to stop. If you don't, that becomes rape. That becomes abuse. If your sexual partner changes his, her, or their mind in the middle of it, you must honor that. You can, at ikaw naman din, kung ikaw naman yung partner, you can withhold consent anytime that you feel you are uncomfortable or at risk. Never do anything where you feel you are being forced or coerced. At wala rin consent sa taong laseng. Yung masyadong laseng, tapos nag-pass out na. Kahit nag-yes nag siya sa umpisa. Rape yun. Oh, meron din naman lasing-lasingan din. MMing lasing, din naman pala lasing. So that is rape, ha? Rape yan. Pag sobrang lasing niya, akala mo nag siya, tapos in the middle of your, ano, or at the beginning, nag-pass out siya, ginalaw mo pa rin siya, that is rape. There is no consent if the person is unconscious. Carter Hayward tells us, and I quote, In the context of mutuality and our fidelity to our commitments, it is wonderful to make love, good to touch and rub and lick and suck each other silly. But we are learning we have to be careful. We are learning to protect ourselves and one another. We are obligated May obligation tayo to respect our own and other people's bodily integrity. Especially, most importantly, the integrity of children, women, and sexually vulnerable men. End of quote. No consent, don't. If you still insist, that is sin. That is rape, that is sexual harassment. Be considerate of the place, venue, or community. In short, there is a proper place where you to engage, where to engage your sexual intimacy that is safe and healthy. Hindi lahat ng lugar ay dapat ginagawang aurahan, ay ginagawang sexual ano exploit. At ito, maraming beses ko na to sinabi. Dito nyo lang maririnig sa simbahang ito on a Lent, on a Sunday or any given Sunday that the pastor and the most of the majority of the members would say and say Amen that sex is good. Libog is good. Go! Ano yung sabi ng pare pag tapos ng misa? Tapos na ang ating misa. Humayo kayo at magpakaligaya. Yan sinasabi. Sasabihin ko yan dito. We are sex positive here. 
but you do not do that here. That's the irony of it. That's the irony of a progressive church. We encourage sex positive. But the irony of it is that that is not something you do in this church. You do not target. Specifically, at nangyayari ito, nangyayari na ito maraming beses sa mga nakikinig sa atin sa, sa live stream. May poging dumating. Bet mo. Inaurahan mo, tinanggihan ka. Another pogi dumating. Inaurahan mo, tinanggihan ka. Lahat na lang ng darating, aaurahan mo. Lahat na lang ng bet mo. O, tapos pag ikaw yung bet nung, nung isa, pero hindi mo siya bet, sasabihin mo sa akin, eh, official policy kasi ng church, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. You know, do it somewhere else, not here. And I will, I will even be delighted to listen to your stories. You know, pagkwentuhan natin, o, oh, may nakemik ka doon sa ganito, may nakemik ka sa ganyan. Tara, kwentuhan tayo. Pakikinig pa ako. But not here. Not in this church, not in this community. Ngayon, technically, alimbawa, mag, pareho kayong single. By some miracle or magic, bet niyo ang isa't isa romantically speaking. As much as possible, ayoko. Pero kung talagang hindi nyo mapagilan ang mga sarili nyo, kausapin nyo ako. Let me know and let's work it out. But as much as possible, again, ang daming lugar, ang daming apps. Wag dito. Wag yung mga bago. Kahit hindi, kahit hindi bago. Wag bago at luma. Ano, wag. Wag ang pastor. Uh, Asan na ba ako yan? Wala tuloy yung ano ko. Wag si, ano, wag si Reverend Mother. Kahit single pa yung pastor, wag. Oh, another. Do not judge or shame the sexual practices or relationships of others, especially when they're doing it. Kung, kung, kung merong particulars, you know, Marami klase ng sexual desires na healthy naman, appropriate. Kung hindi, yung, kung yung ganong sexual practice, desire, is not for you, huwag mong i-judge yung taong may ganong klaseng sexual desire. Na maayos naman, no? Hindi naman harmful, hindi naman ano. Or kung a certain couple has a certain kind of relationship that does not conform to the regular kind of relationship. Huwag natin husgahan, huwag natin silang ishame. At the same time, huwag mo rin i-expect. On, on the flip side, do not expect that what you like is something that another person likes. Do not expect and do not impose that your type of relationship is for everyone and for other people. Sa aspetong ganyan ng mga sexual preferences or relationship preferences, dyan, dyan pumapaloob yung magrespetuhan tayo. Dyan yan applicable. Oo. Well, tingnan natin. <laughs> hindi, hindi natin makukover lahat. Mas masala i-umot pa yung mga specifics na yan. 
ano, well, saka natin pag-usapan yan. Com- complicated yung ano, yung ganyang M eh. Oo. Uh, ang tawag dyan, uh, yun din, you know, bottom shaming. Bottom shaming is sin. Bottom stereotyping is, sh- is sin. Uh, isa pa sa ano niyan yung ano, at ito personal kong struggle nung nag-umpisa to, no? yung pagkakaroon ng mga tao na sides. Hindi ko maintindihan dati yung sides. At to sa mixed hanggang ngayon, hindi ko siya naiintindihan. No? Uh, pero kung yun ang gusto nila, eh di by all means, huwag nating husgahan. They are not less. O another, do not manipulate others to get what you want, sexually or romantically speaking. Anything that you get with manipulation or deception, including sex or relationship, is sin. Kasi walang consent if it is under the guise of deception. And eventually it will backfire. Hindi man ngayon, hindi man agad-agad. Anything that is anything that you get with deception or manipulation will backfire or that you will lose something very important to you. If you are in a position of power or authority, do not use your authority to gain sexual advantage. Minors, kung hindi nyo pa alam, paulit-ulit na ito, given na ito, pero kailangan siyang ulit-ulitin. Minors, children, vulnerable adults are always off limits. Ano yung mga vulnerable adults? For example, um, people with Down syndrome. People with a particular mental health condition who cannot fully give uh, full informed consent. Kahit adult sila. O ito, isa pa sa mga complicated na chika na nachika natin dun sa Amplify sa Taiwan. So mga ate, as much as possible, Ganda lang. Okay? Huwag pay soon. As much as possible, huwag magbayad for sex. Especially for economically vulnerable persons. Prostitution is an exploitation of the poverty of individuals who would rather not sell their bodies if only they have other economic means. Now, don't get me wrong. Iba yan sa se- prostitution is different from sex work. Sex work is someone who has the economic means, but nonetheless chooses to work in the sex industry. Meaning, the sex worker, if we categorize someone as a sex worker, ito yung pagkaunawa ko, ha? Is someone who is not forced into doing sex work, but chooses anyway to do sex work. It's their choice. It's their full choice without any situation or person forcing them to do so. If the person is selling himself or herself or themselves because they are poor, that is prostitution. That is prostitution. And we must not exploit people sexually because they are poor. Ngayon, ito rin, napag-usapan sa Amplify. Naiintindihan ko din. May, may mga ate tayo na the only way to have sexual intimacy is to pay for sex. Meron yan. Meron tayong mga kapatid, kapanalig sa community na sometimes the only way for them to experience intimacy or sexual satisfaction is to pay. 
yun nga, ang guidelines ko lang dyan, number one, make sure whoever is servicing you for sex is not doing so because they are forced into it by a situation or by someone. And number two, pay the rate. <laughs> pay the agreed upon rate. And third, do not be arrogant simply because you are paying for it. It's tricky yan, and I might get into trouble for saying these things, but I will stand by them. Pero again, kung kaya mo ng ganda mo, go ahead. That's that's must be the the default, ganda lang. Or kung hindi ganda, skills. Di ba? Skills. Oh, I mean skills na hindi manipulation na. Skills in the actual ano galing sa galing sa ano the mastery of love making sa performance oh ito pa uh, be careful and extra sensitive of your own sexual behavior magkaroon tayo ng sexual awareness sa sarili nating sexual desires and behaviors are you beginning to be addicted to pornography or to sex is your sexual practices starting to affect your relationships and other areas of your life? Kasi pag ganun na siya, nagiging mali na yan. Sabi nga nila, anything in excess is bad. In any sexual activity or engagement, dahil we are now in the time of medicine and of information, scientific information, Always put primary care to your health and the health of others. Be informed of sexual health. Use condoms to prevent majority of sexually transmitted infections and unplanned preg pregnancy. Ulitin ulit, deceiving someone so that you may have unprotected sex, penetrative sex, is rape. Deception pa rin yun. Yung, kunwari nakakondom ka, tapos in the middle of it, hindi na pala. Rape yun. O, patapos na. Ano kung haba na ng sermon natin? Sobrang haba na. Question? Nasira yung condom in the middle of it. Tanggalin mo. Magsuot ka ulit ng condom. Hindi pwedeng te dire diretsyo. Ano? Para kang nasiraan ng sasakyan ta, na, or pumutok yung gulong mo. <laughs> Nag-drive ka pa rin. Ano mangyayari? Aksidente. So, kung pumutok, nabutas ang condom, imposible hindi mo alam, especially for the, the active partner, the penetrator, Tanggal, tanggalin mo. <laughs> Withdraw. That is a choice. It is a choice na idiretsyo mo. It is a choice to withdraw. Iba nga. May mga napapanood nga akong ano eh. <laughs> withdraw. Malapit na withdraw. Diba? At yun nga yung standard sa ano eh, sa porn eh. But, well, of course, that is porn. O, pata, ito na. Last three points. Tapos na. Tapos na ang sermon natin today. I know that there is more to learn about sexual ethics and sexual theology. And I encourage you, ini-encourage ko kayong lahat, to think more and reflect about these things, situations, and principles. Reflect and look at your own sexual desires and current sexual relationships. Tignan nyo, no? Reflect nyo. Reflect on your past sexual encounters or even the lack thereof. 
Doing so, I pray that you will be able to form. Form your own body politics and your own sexual ethics, including your sexual boundaries. So it's not just about, ito pala, hindi ko nabanggit kanina. It's not just about what you should not do. It is also about knowing what is not okay for you so that others will not take advantage of you. Know your own body and sexual boundaries. What is okay and not okay for you so that you will not fall victim to abuse of others. Sex is good. Sex is sacred. Pleasure and sexual in intimacy are human experiences that we must celebrate and enjoy. Sex is good. Sex is sacred. Pleasure and sexual intimacy are human experiences that we must celebrate and enjoy while at the same time making sure that we protect and care for ourselves, others, and the communities we are a part of. We reclaim, we proclaim, and celebrate sex, celebrate our sex lives and sex bodies with honesty, integrity, and in the ways that help bring justice and freedom to our world. Ang paglaya ay hindi lang paglaya sa kagutuman. Ang paglaya ay paglaya rin ng ating kasarian. Kasama sa usapin at realidad ng sex, kasama sa usapin at realidad ng katarungan at paglaya ang sex. Kasama ang sex sa, sa pananampalatayang mapagpalaya. I end this reflection with the words the wisdom, the guiding words of the author of the letter of Peter, our last reading. You must make every effort to support your faith with goodness and goodness with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with endurance and endurance with godliness and godliness with mutual affection and mutual affection with love let sex be rooted in our faith and goodness and let sex be expressed in mutual affection and sincere love sex is good amen amen <laughs>